good? We are back. Yours truly, one and only Paul Pickett, host of the Paul Pickett Podcast, a.k.a. Triple P, a.k.a. The Common Sense Podcast, show source for music, sports, politics, world events, and much, much more. Today, I got a guest in the building. We got Mr. J from NCC, what is it, NCC Records? NCC Records. And he's come through to talk about his uh, documentary, his music, and much more. The documentary is called Underground Experience. Thank you for coming through. Appreciate it, man. Um, let's start with where you from, like born and raised. Well, you know, I've been here in the village most of my life. Okay, in the area. Um, good. Well, I can't even count how many years right now. But I was born in Trenton. We moved down here when I was Jersey. About 11. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, when I was about 11, 11, 12. So you know, I've, I've been down here a good, good piece. Um, you know, used to hang on the north side a lot. Um, that's pretty much where, where we kind of set up and, um, you know, been doing music and stuff like that. I used to go down to, uh, if anybody remembers unique studios back in the day down there on person street, that, that's where we, you know, I did my first joints down there. Um, we did a show down at the uh, Prince Charles back in the day, back in uh, 99. Um, you know, we have just been plugging away for a very long time. Was it like a specific artist um, that got, I know a lot of cats say they got into the, the dancing part, breaking first, and then they got into rapping. For me, it was a specific artist. Like, what got you into, like, hip-hop in the first place? Just hearing, like, Slick Rick on the block. Like, you know, Slick Rick. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Hearing people, you know, play play hip-hop music, and I was trying to figure out what it was. You know what I mean? Yeah. People used to come back in the day when I was, you know, a little, little kid, you know, probably not even, you know, barely in, in elementary school, um, you know, come around back in Jersey and, and they'd be walking around with the beatboxes and you hear them on the block. And, you know, one of my first joints that I ever wrote was like a, a version of uh, LL Cool J's I D Love. I was writing since I was like in, in elementary school. So, you know, that's what really drew me into it. What was it about Slick Rick? I was big on Slick Rick and it was definitely at first the jewelry thing. Um, what caught me was the the, the music, the, the you know, hearing the show. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was kind of familiar to like, you know, the Inspector Gadget beat, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And you were like, what is this? And then you kind of got more into the cadence and the rhythms and, you know, the stories and stuff like that that kind of drew me in. Um, you know, hearing him, like I said, hearing LL, yeah. hearing KRS, um, you know, going on and on into like uh, digital underground and different people like that. You know what I'm saying? Just really starting to hear and see, you know, it used to be, um, I'm trying to remember back in the day, uh, D Barnes used to have a, a um, like a video show. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? You used to see, you see, see that on, on Saturday afternoons. You know what I mean? Just kind of starting to get into it. MTV wasn't really hot and heavy yet. Yeah. BET didn't really get any real coverage in every household yet. Yeah. But once they started popping off with like Rap City, you know, it was Rap heavy City was the, the shit. Yeah. Heavy in the Rap City, heavy in the Yo MTV Raps. Um, Yo you MTV know, Raps was as, the shit as a too. young kid. Um, just you know, all those different things. Wasn't that last year on TV raps? Wasn't it like a, a all out cipher or something? Yeah, yeah, it was like an all out cipher. And I remember. Um, <laughs> Somebody, yes, uh, MC Search went to go grab the mic and Special Ed went and <clears throat> snatched it from him and whatnot. You think Slick Rick had one of the most unique voices? He was like the first international kind of cat to really make it on the American scene, wasn't he? Yeah, I mean, he was the first international cat. An interesting story about him that I heard, um, I forgot who else told who, who told that story. Um, I used to say his his voice and his accent was even deeper than he used to use. So that's why um, Dana Dane would come up with that that accent and play yeah. with it and stuff like that, because he thought it was interesting. So, you know, it's kind of interesting hip hop story to me. And um, so basically, did you start rapping first or were, or were you like, because like I said, some cats get into the breakdancing part of it first, or like the graffiti uh, or the DJing or... I was always, I was always writing. I was right. always writing. Um, I started writing first. I used to do a lot of, you know, 
a lot of drawing and everything. I used to do a lot of, you know, um, sketches on paper and stuff like that. But I was doing always always doing a lot of writing. Um, you know, I had written. I got a whole rhyme book probably from the time I was in middle school to you know, till now. You know, basically. What um, school did you go to around here? Um, I was out in Western Harnett. Western Harnett. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, but uh, like I said, I hung on the I hung on the north side. All my, you know, a lot of my homies were from E. e. Smith. We stayed, you know, posted up off of Brainerd Avenue. Hung out in, you know, um, in Tokay Park. You know, that's that's basically where our little playground. That's where we were. You know, a lot of times. Um, what was the motivation behind this documentary? Like, because uh, a lot of artists don't really, you know. When it comes to supporting other artists, artists can be very selfish in our own little, you know, wanting our own thing to pop. My thing was, I was always wanting to show love. That's how I started. I wanted to have this, you know, whole scene be kind of like New York or, you know, Houston or um, Oakland kind of back in the day. You know, those scenes had okay. a lot of a lot of unity even though you had cats beef from time to time, the cities and the people supported each other that way. Like the music could be done there. And that's how it started to pop on, you know, on other people's radars. Cause you started hearing one and then you, then you heard another person from that area. Like you hear, like say for instance, um, Houston, you hear Scarface. Then next thing you know, you hear, um, you know, talk about the Ghetto Boys or Slim Thug or um, UGK, you know, or um, Paul Wall. You know, you, you start you start to hear other people bubble up yeah. in that area, and then that's how it got on the scene. On like Oakland, you'd hear about E40 and Mac Dre and um, Too Short. Who is other one of my favorite to, of all time? Yeah, definitely, <laughs> definitely dope. Um, you know, you hear about JT, the bigger figure. Yeah, JT, uh, the bigger figure from uh, Florida. Yeah. <clears throat> Why do you think we're not like a Houston? I mean, we got the talent, but there's clearly something missing. If you had to pinpoint one thing that's missing, is it the unity like Atlanta? I think so. I think it's the unity. I think, you know, there's, there's everybody segmented. You know what I'm saying? Um, even going back in the day, you know, everybody wasn't dealing with everybody else. Just it was always to, a competition, right? Yeah, it was kind of competition. Friendly competition, but it was always a competition. It was yeah. never let's unite like Voltron and, you know, bring the resources together. And I've actually had situations like that. Like um, back in the days, um, the cat that used to run the BTS crew, I think his name was Kenny. We actually went half and half on the show at, at Greenville. And it didn't go down like you know, we plan, but, um, it, you know, it was actually definitely a unifying moment for me. Cause we also had a situation pop off at a club where another crew, I don't know if you remember PK and wise entertainment where some stuff popped off and they actually kind of came to try to help out the people I was with. Cause I was with BTS and, you know, we went to the spot that was a little, it was like one of those spots where the cops were checking <clears throat> for like, guns in your car and your trunks before you go into the club. So I already knew it was like out of my element. So mm. unity, that's what you think it is? Unity? Yeah, I think, you know, I had this discussion with um, Bomb Shelter a few days ago. You know, everybody was kind of segmented and even having discussions with certain, you know, other cats um, doing this documentary. It was segmented. You know, people were doing something over here. These people were doing something over here, you know, kind of during the, the entire time, like, you know, our group um, back in the day used to be called Omega Clan. Um, you know, we ended up growing from four to 32 members. Yeah. Um, you know, we try to do shows at, uh, talent shows at East Smith, try to do stuff over here, over there, you know, met a lot of roadblocks. Um, but we were doing our thing in our corner, you know, RPMCs were doing their thing in their corner. Uh, you said RPMCs? Who's it? Um, I'm not familiar with them. Uh, was it uh lord i'm trying to remember um i believe are they from where from your side of town um no they i think they were kind of like west pit west of our area okay that's where my uh, sister went I to think, school um like 
I think. And if I'm mistaken, little, little, that's where bomb shelters went to school as well. Uh, well, what you call it? At one time, um, uh, uh, one time, Filthy went to Smith. Okay. So, but um, I think it was like Terry. I want to say Terry Sanford area. I think maybe um, because Rain, I think, was a part of it at one time, or a couple other people. Um, Terry yeah. Sanford used to have them cake parties back in the days. I thought they was like <laughs> the coolest school because I had a friend that would they would call the ITK parties and used to get me in free because I, I would rap, as long as I would rap at the party, they used to call me Rapid Paul. They would never call me by my rap name. <laughs> never ever. They were like Rapid Paul, Rapid Paul. Um, okay. Is there still opportunity for the unity to come together? I Is it so. got to be with the younger cats, though, or are some of us like? I think you know, it's a little not, too old, or or do we gotta like lean on these young cats to try to get them to unify, or what's the solution? I think they're trying to work on some unity now. I've seen some people trying to really press that. I think it's going to be part of you know the OGs to come up along with the the uh, the younger cats, you know, to come together and try to push the scene where it needs to be. Because, like I said. Everybody was doing everything in their own corner. RPMCs, Ivy League, um, Ground Zero, uh, Bomb Shelter, um, us, the Omega Clan, um, you know, several other different groups and, and ambassadors. There was a whole bunch of different, you know, cliques around the town um, that were doing doing their own thing. So, you know, it it's going to be dependent on all of us to try to come together first in flight you know i don't want to leave yeah they were too. nice yeah i um, love that crew rain and big cast yeah. and traffic and d murder and uh i want to say sweepstakes was part of them at the time maybe i think so I'm, I'm yeah I'm, i don't want to leave no names out but, uh, i'm gonna try to catch up with Kaz too i've been trying to get back back, back and forth i've been doing so much on this i'm trying to get it get up with him and sit down and talk about his story as well um but yeah, just just it is it's going to depend on, on all all of us to try to come together and, and network, and that's what I've been trying to press in, in every interview and every time I talk to somebody, just trying to network and stay up and 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 you know really try to make something happen because there's no reason that we can't do everything here. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're um, you're right. There's no excuses like that. You, we can really give except. <clears throat> like blaming ourselves as a whole or as a collective, you know, like I was telling Bob Shelters, you got individuals that have done some individual things, but I think a lot of people cling on to this J. Cole should put somebody on from Fayetteville yeah, mentality right. too. And I'm not really with that. You know, I, I think J. Cole, I always say, I felt like he did it right. You know, a lot of people, I would agree. Fayetteville is probably the most talented city, you know, and we're probably always going to say, we're probably going to be biased and say we're the most talented city, but I always feel like Charlotte should be the hub for North Carolina because it's the, 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 the largest city, you know, the, the biggest cities always should be the hubs, not like the, you know, there's, when you go to any state, you know, you go to California, the fourth biggest city is not the major hub. You go to New York, the fourth biggest city is not the major hub. Even when you're talking about the Houstons and and Houston is probably, I don't know what's bigger, Houston or Dallas. I don't know, but they're they're probably like equal, right? And Houston's more of a the music scene and whatnot. But the fourth biggest city would never be, you know, the front runner. Mm -hmm. And we're we're really like the third or fourth biggest city when you're talking about population. I mean, Raleigh's bigger than us, a lot more popping downtown. And that's another thing. Our music yeah. scene is really terrible around the town. Like from back in, I remember back in the days, there was always a show, you know, there was always, you know, something you could find, whether it was open mics or getting maybe some small pay performances, you know, 710 drag strip. Um, the joint we was talking about on Sky Road the other day. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just always joints. Murkison Road, the schools like E. Smith, the talent shows. Westover used to do stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, how did you go about picking and choosing who you wanted to have on the documentary? Um, it's just kind of by just reaching out to people. You know what I mean? I'm really kind of 
gathering, you know. Did people. you have specific people that you were shooting for at first? Or? Um, not necessarily. What I ended up doing was like I did a show in, um, in, in, uh, in Sanford, and there was a lot of different artists there, and I wanted to just start by talking to a lot of a lot of different artists, a lot of the younger artists that were coming up, and you know I performed there as well. Um, I did a show in New Bern, talked to an artist there, you know, um, and just decided certain people that I could get up with and certain people that I was trying to, you know, do certain things with, you know, I'd sit down with them and, and try to catch up and try to find out what people were doing and what their thoughts were on the scene and what the thoughts were as far as what they were doing and how they feel about, you know, and what were they saying? Happened. Um, you know, some people, the older, the older cats, you know, sometimes they're not as, as connected to the scene. Yeah. The younger cats yeah. are not as connected to the older cats, so they don't understand. Okay. The history and let's talk about history. that. That's the problem, right? Yeah. Like I always have this problem when I see old schoolers just shitting on the new generation of talent. I, I feel like you can't just keep, shit talking them and, and trash talking them and talking down on them you know i know there's a like we all in our era it was the thing to always shout out names that were before you yeah and it seems not to be a thing nowadays and us older cats or old schoolers we'd be like oh you know y'all ain't showing love to the people before you but i asked myself were they really influenced by our generation and I don't think they were. Um, indirectly, yes. Directly, sometimes no. No. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's just there's a on, disconnect, it on, right? It's a disconnect. Some of it is by default. Some of it's by design. Like you know, they you have certain entities that want to keep people disconnected because it it serves their purpose. You know what I mean? It makes it easy for them to kind of keep these people, you know, pigeonholed or keep them under under a certain type of control because they could get whatever they want from them. Yeah. You know what I mean? If they don't know the history, if they don't know the people to talk to, if they don't know the right folks to go to, to kind of, you know, get some kind of knowledge from, then other people could come in and tell them whatever they want. But definitely shit talking them ain't going to get you no, love. No, like no, get, get them to like show love no. back, you know? And, and I, it's definitely accountability on both sides, I would say. Definitely. You know, I think, you know, we have to kind of take some responsibility and have to understand. Find you know, a different approach, a, maybe? Different approach and sometimes just offering the olive branch. Yeah, 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 just, yeah. Just reaching be, out. Yeah, just, be the bigger man. Touching, be the bigger touching, man. Just touching base with certain folks yeah. and being like, hey, man, you know, what's going on? What are you doing? You know, find out what they got going on. And then. Da, 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 you know, I'm, I might do it this way. Yeah. I might do that that way. Maybe you might want to take a look at this. You know what I'm saying? Just suggest certain things to do. And they could take it or not take it. And you just got to keep moving. So you in tune with like a lot of these younger cats locally around here? I'm, 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 I'm not so much. Myself. I'm learning. I'm networking. I'm always networking. I'm always like, you know, I, I don't know everything. Yeah, nobody, nobody knows. knows yeah, nobody knows everything. But some customers everybody knows never something. always right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? I always say, you know, nobody knows everything, but everybody knows something. Yeah. So that's why you need to network. That's why you need to try to stay plugged in and try to reach out to certain people and just, you know, sometimes show up to certain spots when you can. Try to do certain things when you can. Trying to invite certain people to, over to different things when you can. That goes back to that thing I want. I was talking about when. Um, I was saying, you know, I wanted to kind of see to kind of be like New York because there was a there was a, a transfer of energy, a transfer of information, a transfer of culture. You know, what I'm saying when they talked about Fred Five Freddy going to downtown clubs and inviting, you know, uh, certain uh, punk artists and stuff yeah. like that. You know, Debbie Harry or whatever up to uptown to go to the uptown clubs and stuff like that. It's just that kind of networking that kind of transfer of information and culture that's got to happen so that things do pop off the way everybody wants it to because it's a benefit to everybody you know the thing i've always said about north carolina or favor well, north carolina in favor because we got the universities we got military spots we have a lot of versatility we've always been like when you go like to up north north carolina it was more like 
boom bap underground and you get further down south we were kind of more crunk and and we, we kind of were like the best of both worlds and then i remember going up to new york for the first time and literally hearing them try to sound like us down here what did you think about that shift in that sound um I think did it upset you any I, it upset me i'm not gonna lie it turned i had my stomach turned i wanted to throw up I just want to throw up in my mouth like what am i hearing right now like i'm in new york and i'm hearing you know walk a flock of flames and frenchy and i'm like i i can't be in new york right now i gotta be where the hell am i yeah you might be you might be on Atlanta. yeah i thought yeah i didn't I know think, where I was you at. know what happens is like i said certain things are on some things about default certain things about what design you, i think it was they it's, were they saw our success yeah they saw the success of atlanta they saw the success of the sound that was they, they tried to copy and, so and, bad and the cop is it's, yeah it's what happens copy and paste it's part of the the industry effect copy and paste the, well this is what's selling we you know we don't want to hear what other people are doing because guaranteed you know it's always been a commercial lane yeah and there's been an independent lane yeah yeah, the commercial lane is going to sound like whatever's popping, whatever's popular, whatever's but, you know, but whatever's in the selling. 90s, but the though, independent lane, this it there's was a little people. different though. Some cats was underground and mainstream, like a like yeah. a, like MOP Annie Up wasn't like really designed to be a mainstream radio hit. It it just the reaction it got. It was even a club hit, you know and. Sometimes it's not like in the club. Like, I don't think 50 Cent intentionally said, I want to be a pop artist. But his records, we got so big, they were pops, pop songs. Like, I was literally brought into hip hop by a cat that you could say was hip hop and pop, but it wasn't intentional. Heavy D and the Boys. It was just the songs were so popular and so clean. Yeah, you know that's the thing the clean, clean those clean super clean hip-hop yeah new, new jack swing kind of production yeah those right. super clean hip-hop yeah. songs can always switch over to pop and whatnot without you intentionally do you ever frown on cats when it just like accidentally goes pop no um i think some people do they're like oh he's pop but it wasn't you could yeah. tell they didn't really attend that it just well, because we happened. had that we had that thing, you know, especially in the nineties, they had that thing, you know, keep it real, you gotta keep it real. Right? Oh, it's still like and, that. And, 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 yeah. and, and it wasn't it wasn't real. It wasn't yeah, it was you know, people people did things to go pop because they saw it was selling. And during that era, it's an evolution because you know the the corporate world didn't have that that control over everything that was doing. They were they were just sinking their teeth in yeah. because before they didn't want anything they to do with it. They thought it was a yeah. fad. Yeah, they, they thought yeah, it was, yeah. you know, oh, it was out of here. We got how much how much seconds they didn't think it was gonna last it's like fifteen forty nine point nine nine five. Yeah, it'll be out of here. But once they were able to get their, their teeth into it, now they change it. Now it's oh it's got to be marketed to, to this group, that group, this group, that group. We can check off all the boxes, but you know, some people do that. Some people don't it's, you know, and sometimes you get these, these movements that are stronger than whatever the cor the corporations are trying to put out there. Did you see what Karis once said about the very first hip hop label though, which was an independent label. Like they really like dropped the ball. Cause even they didn't know what they had. They didn't know what they had and then they started letting all the the white labels in and stuff like that and they really had a monopoly on it at the time I mean, so much sugar yeah, yeah they yeah. had a monopoly on it and they pretty much didn't capitalize you know and i think he was saying they were jerking the artist over as well too you know which we know that's always been a um a thing like and that's actually starting to come back and validity more with Kanye and stuff bringing in these label contracts and whatnot which we've always known I would say they're worse today than they were in the 90s though because the 360 deal yeah 100 percent um, like they're taking money off of things that they had no part of creating yeah, yeah. and, and not creating, even just creating, creating like you know like just because you invest in my music 
I might have got my merchandise popping myself. You know what I'm saying? You might not have never invested a single dollar into my merch. And then you getting percentages off my merch, you know? And then some of these artists are even booking the, the venues themselves. And you still getting pieces of that. And it's like, I only think labels should only get money back from the places they invest into, you know, and which is sure. typically don't invest in into the music itself. Yeah, you know? Now, you know, they get a piece of everything. If you, even if you're a movie star, they get a piece of that. They get a piece of your commercial success. They get a piece of, you know, any kind of, any kind of thing, but you know, they're not necessarily the first ones to do it. Disney, you know themselves have I don't even want to talk about 360 that. deals you know individual kids who were you know if they were part of shows and they could sing they were on hollywood records which disney owned and then the part of the movie so they were all through that, that product. that's how all the talent you know, shows are too the uh like america's got <clears throat> talent and all that we had a group uh doo-wop group get on the single i think it was a sing-off and they got no money from any of the streaming and then I think they ended up getting paid to go on tour towards the end, and that was it. But they were getting such small, small um, quantities. Like, okay, what's the goal with this documentary? Are, we, are you going to be, like, putting us on Tubi or anything of that nature or any, like, movie streaming platforms? Yeah, that's what I'm working towards, putting it on Tubi, uh, Amazon Prime. Um, trying to get it out here to, you know, all the film festivals and, and things that I can, you know, submit it to just to get that, that wide exposure of all the artists and all the people, you know, uh, who are involved in it. Now, is Black Watch is in that one movie. I forgot the name of it, but um, is that movie on Amazon Prime? Do you know? What movie is that? I don't know the name of it. It's a movie with Black Watch. They just had a release party. Um, I, I, I think I saw. I, I think like they're that. on Tubi. I think they might be on Tubi. I was just in another um, small um, independent movie on uh, on Tubi called uh, Am, uh, Excuse Me um, Savage Genesis. Okay. Which you know my song um, Trolling for Nothing is in. So you know, um, yeah, Tubi's opening up some lanes. Um, I was in another movie. Well, you know. It's kind of like a background, but you know, uh, we had a uh, showing down here that I hosted and set up um, back during the pandemic. So, you know, it was kind of iffy there, but um, it's called uh, uh, The Herb Train. Uh, shout out to Kyan the Lion King. Uh, he, did, <coughs> he did that movie. So, you know, and I was glad to be a part of that. Um, was also part of a movie called uh, Tales from the Dead Zone. We're still Tales waiting for the, the, okay. They're waiting, um, I guess, to finish up post production and everything on that to release it properly. My video, um, Savage, is supposed to be in that movie. So, and how um, many people are you going to probably have on this documentary altogether? Um, we're looking at, well, I've got probably about five. Six different people. At the, Are you at typically this time. asking the, like standard questions on here? I'm, I'm really trying to get people to kind of tell the story. I'm not trying to do really just kind of uh, question and answer okay. things. I'm really just kind of getting people to kind of tell their story and then, you know, maybe ask them a couple questions about how they feel about the scene. The scene and, and, and stuff how like they that. feel about, you know, you know, their part in it and, and what they see going forward, you know, and just basically what they're doing. Um, are you starting to see like I'm starting like Bomb Shelter, you know, re releasing the album, doing interviews? A lot of people, there was somebody was saying they hope that like lights a fire under some asses. You think you know we can start doing that? I think so. I think it's, I think it's important. Um, you know, the streaming market has changed the way people can do music and put music out. So, you know, it's important for people to, who, you know, if that's your, your passion, that's your fire, don't let it, you know, don't let it go out. You got time, you got, you know, the game has changed. There's no so, such thing as, you know, it's just, you know, it's just young boys, y'all old folks need to sit down somewhere. Nah. Yeah, yeah, there's you know a lot of that going on, right? It's, it's a lot of that, that going on, it's right? It's not that, it's not that. It's you a mean, lot of that going music, on. Music is timeless. So if you got the energy, you got the passion to do it, you know how to, you know, cause conduct yourself and conduct your business and go out here and network with people and make some things happen. 
There's no reason you can't. And it's so much everything's so much easier than when we were first coming up doing it. Like, you know, we didn't everybody didn't have access to software, you know, recording you record at your own house. I mean, because now I can literally just record a song, do the artwork and distribute it in 30 minutes to an hour, as long as I don't, you know, you get through it in like a couple takes mm -hmm. and whatnot. Back in the days, it was just a longer, longer process. Distribution yeah. had more value, you know, than ever. Distribution was like gold back then. Definitely. It was like gold. Now it's like shit because there's 100,000 songs being uploaded now what do you do you think streaming is a good thing or a bad thing i'm, I'm like it's a 50 50 yeah I'm position like, because <sighs> once again we're dealing with the two different levels you're dealing with the commercial level you're dealing with the independent level on the commercial level any commercial producer studio owner will tell you well put out as many songs as you can put out that's consistency you got to make sure you keep putting out music, keep putting out music, keep putting out music. Well, there's two different sides to that. If people don't catch what you're doing, you're just trying to throw stuff up against the wall to see what sticks. If you have a catalog of music and you're going to put it out there and you have a purpose, then put it out there. Which, what you're going to have to do is keep pushing those things as if nobody else has ever heard. I actually them. disagree with that. I'm going to tell you why. Take a cat like NBA Youngboy. He does that, right? He's number two stream on the plat on like behind Drake. So he drops a music video about every week. But you know who another cat that does did that that's a whole different realm is Russ. He dropped the song every week. Because see, that's the thing. Unless you're advertising if you're not putting no money in the advertise at least a minimal dollar a day two dollars a day just simply uploading it is never, never gonna be good. enough unless you're doing it at a larger portion and i think with this and, and that guy that was saying and it doesn't necessarily gotta be music i think that's where they're going wrong it's really about content you do, I think you do got to pump out a shit ton of content nowadays. I, I really think this, unless you reach a certain point where your fan base is like, you know, you got a major, like a real major fan base locked in already. Yeah, you could probably space it out like a Jonah Lucas. Mm -hmm. But to me, until you get to that point, you almost got to just ram it down their throats. You, and, and, I think another thing I have a problem with is, I don't know if you agree with this. Too many artists are going this mindset, I got to make money from day one. And I think that's a big problem. I think this is a legal dope game. Dope game. It's like the wire. You got to give out this little tester. Get them hooked. And until they get hooked, you know, you got to kind of, Keep trying to get them hooked. And then when they get hooked, it's a whole different game now. It, it, the hook, we can sell it. We don't got to give it to them free. But I think too many people go in this mindset. They should get paid shows out the gate. Like yeah, a dude to start rapping like last week. You know, these young bucks, they start rapping like last week. And like, yo, I should be getting paid for a show. But if me and you were to book them, we would lose a lot of money. Exactly. I'm, and I've done shows where uh, years ago I had a guy come up to me talking about, y'all should be paying me to do da 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 I'm like, I don't know you from a can of paint, bro. Yeah, no disrespect. Yeah. No disrespect to your talent. No disrespect to what you're doing. I don't know you from a can of paint. And if I don't know you, just like you don't know me, what, how how's that work? I think we what throw this, I should get paid for my art kind of thing out a little <clears throat> too much. Like even Picasso had to, you yeah. know, th these cats had to get you know they probably had to give away a bunch of free paintings to get to the point you exactly. know I, it, it's like i look at actors the grind of an actor they could go through broadway for like 10 years before they get an acting gig and rappers we want like this overnight success yeah but there's no such thing as an overnight success even an overnight success has got 10 13 years in before somebody sees it 
I mean, it doesn't even necessarily mean they got 10, 13 years worth of shows. They got 10, 13 years worth of effort in yeah. some realm, some way, shape, form, or fashion. You know, those 10,000 hours people talk about, you know what I'm saying? You put 10,000 hours into a craft, like a comedian or an actor or somebody, those 10,000 hours you put in, they eventually pay off because you've done all the prerequisite work to get where you need to go. But, you know, it's it's, it's a lot of people out here. We got, you know, those, those get rich quick schemes, you know, and that's just not the way the world works. You got to put that work in. And if it's truly your passion, you're going to put the work in and it's not going to feel like work. Would you think, do you, I don't know if you agree with it. I think to me, the rap game is turned into almost like, it's like the military. I, I think I, you know where I'm about to go with this. It's like, it's become the last resort for a lot, a lot of people. Like, because there's just everybody trying to do it. You know, I mean, you got the worst of the worst. You know, then you got the average, above average. You got great. I mean, you got everybody's trying to do it. I, I mean, you see cats like Soldier Boy who were very simple when they came out in basic. And anybody was like, well, I can do what he's doing. You know, I've almost felt like it's become like the last resort, like for a lot of people. And everybody tries to do it and nobody knows what they're doing. They, they There's two parts to the business, the, the making music and the breaking music. And I feel like the artists don't know nothing past that line of making music. And I think that's always going to be a problem. Well, I mean, I think it was always a problem in the, in the beginning of music period. Yeah. Because you had everybody who was, you know, when you had jazz singers, everybody wanted to get to a jazz club, try to sing and figure they big, you know, big as Duke Ellington or whoever. Yeah. And then you had rock stars. Everybody had a garage band, you know what I'm saying? And they figured they were going to be as big as Aerosmith or whoever. And, you know, and pop stars, everybody wanted to go sing, you know, when they used to have those little um, things in malls and they go do their little video in the mall booth or sing or whatever. Oh, now they're going to be on MTV. Well, this is the new era of that. This is the new age of that. Everything has an evolution. So this is where we at. Everybody wants to rap. Everybody wants to, you know don't know anything about the history or how to be an MC. They just want to get in the booth and say some stuff, yeah. get on the beat and figure, all right, now I'm going to get a paid show. Now I'm going to get, you know, money. Now I'm going to get, you know, all the, all the trappings of being famous. And you said MC. I'm glad you said that. We're kind of in the era <clears throat> where everybody's redefining things, right? Like freestyling in our era was you spit it off the top of the dome, no written, you know, you just go in nowadays freestyling is you just go in and do a written, right? They, they pretty much redefined it. Well, not necessarily. It's kind of like going back to the original. Yeah. Because, you know, cats who talk about, you ask cats back in like Kane's day or yeah. Miss B or whoever, they said freestyle was just a freestyle. It's something I wrote that I'm just giving away. Okay. So And then that like even changed. Comes back, yeah. Comes back, yeah. You know, circles back around. Then so, that changed. The freestyle was just you spit it off the top of the dome and then now freestyles just you go in and spit it whenever they tell you to spit it, basically. Why do you think hip hop is the only genre that frowns on ghostwriting? Because it was supposed to be from the streets and the original. You were supposed to be able to do your own thing. That was the only thing that was do it yourself. We was the 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 narrative was everybody didn't have uh uh set of drums everybody was supposed have, to be uh, original no hip-hop was sampling from the get-go yeah i mean there's a lot of sampling there's a lot of things but what the thing was was we took something from somewhere else and made it into something else that was our own yeah and it was supposed to be i would it say it was supposed to be your your feelings and your thoughts yeah it's supposed to be do it yourself 100 percent. yeah and that's why people frown on ghostwriting because it's like okay I'm not listening to, to you. Who are you? I'm listening to somebody else. But so why would it be who, any who different from artists? any other genre, though? Just because hip hop from the streets, why would that make it where it has to be so much more authentic? Music is music, and you know, if it's supposed to be an expression of thought. Shouldn't all of it like kind of be looked at the same way? Because I mean, like Dr. Dre. Probably the greatest producer of all time with two of the best albums of all time. Didn't write a single word, probably. 
Yeah, but in his his it, defense, do we hold that against claiming, him? No, because he's not claiming to be an MC, and he's not claiming to be the best MC. Well, this okay. I'm glad you said that. Do do we sometimes try to put the MC label on people we shouldn't? Like I remember when, um, what's his name? Oh man, what's my man's name? Post Malone first come out. People like, yo, Post Malone ain't spitting bars. He ain't doing this. He ain't doing that. When the hell did Post Malone say he want to do this and he want to do that? Like, why would we just assume Post Malone wants to be an MC? Cares anything? Post Malone said himself, he's a rock star. You know, it's like, well, do we sometimes try to put the labels on these people? Like, why they ain't spitting bars? Why they ain't doing this and why they ain't doing that when they might not want to? Put those labels on themselves. Some of it is we allow other people into that lane to define other people for us. Yeah, especially in the culture, like yeah. you shouldn't you shouldn't be able to, to speak on it if you're not a student of the culture. That's just my my thoughts and my my mind about it. Um, I can, and, I can and probably agree one, with some of that. People define it, try to define the artist for us, and we kind of go with it, and it's yeah. not really. That's not really what it is. What he wants to be. And that's and the thing. We got to always remember. Like, because people be like, well, he's selling out. How do we know he's selling out? Because we say he's selling out. Maybe that's what this cat wanted to do. Like MC Hammer, for example. They would say, he, they used to, MC Hammer's a sellout, this, that. Yeah. Nobody would say that to MC Hammer's face, though. No, because they knew better. They knew better. <laughs> they knew but, better. But the thing is. That's part of that keeping it real, and some of that stuff went wrong. Yeah. The reality is, MC Hammer was probably the biggest uh, provider, the biggest employer for Oakland yeah. from '89 to to '95. There's no yeah, no, yeah. Bigger, no putting, bigger no bigger employer. No, yeah, you're right. He put a lot of <laughs> money Oakland. in a lot of pockets. A lot <laughs> I mean, of money in a lot of pockets. Take, take the whole hood, put it on a bus, and, and, and put it on stage. Yeah, yeah, like, I mean, how do you yeah. Work? You know what I'm saying, and and people had to go back and and and, and kind of atone for that. Yeah. So, so now the people go, oh yeah, now we got to give him his props. He may maybe wasn't the greatest MC, but he was the biggest hip hop entertainer, and, and that's he's the, the reason uh, for everybody being able to sell like they sold after the fact. Entertainer, that's another good word. Like you got some artists that are just recording artists. And some are performing artists, and some are both. Yeah, you know, I think that's another thing. We 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 will put the expectations on and record every recording artist to be a great performer, and we can't do that. Everybody can't be a great performer, right? No, no, everybody can't be a great performer. Everybody ain't a doctor. Everybody ain't a nurse. Everybody ain't a practitioner. Everybody some can't be careless one, you know. Woo, woo! That's the sound of the bullets. Everybody yeah, can't be that, right? Yeah, nobody can't. You know, you got to be who you are. And that's the the other thing about you know definitions and and putting different labels and names on things. Um, you know, I talked to somebody else about uh, you know these lists that are going around. Like who's what the list? Biggest, uh, who's the greatest list, or even a local list, a local NC hip hop list, MC list, and who's the seller list, and all this stuff. I, like I was trying to say, you know, what is the criteria? What criteria are they using? What words and what specific labels are you putting on these artists that put them on these lists? I like to have two different lists. I like to have I who's the the best sounding like rapper list or who's the great. I don't think the greatest and the best are the same. Yeah. Like because when you talk about greatest, you always got to include success in my mind. And and to me, the most successful rapper of all time is Jay Z. And, and that's not just including like success within rap, just overall yeah, Jay-Z businessman and, and Kanye businessman. might be right behind him. Yeah. Kanye. I mean, Eminem could be there if he was less humble and, and more focused on probably different businesses, but he's not, he don't seem like he has that John D Rockefeller mind like Jay-Z has. And I always like, thought that couldn't be coincidence that they chose this name Rockefeller and literally this cat was the John D. Rockefeller of hip hop. Literally. Mm -hmm. Literally. And and people to this day still don't 
see what Rockefeller that. did. They still, it's like punching them right in the mouth, and they don't get like the do it yourself motto is really the best way if you can. Yeah. yeah. I mean, especially if you want musical freedom, musical control. Because, like, you look at the locks, you got Jada who said, he clearly said out of his mouth, I don't want to risk my own money on my own albums. Mm-hmm. Which I was like, I took that some kind of way. Like, you're not willing to bet on yourself. Sometimes you got to bet on yourself. Sometimes you're the only one who can bet on you. you but know, everybody Styles else P will always bet on himself. Yeah. But Jada won't. I always felt some kind of way about that. Like, do, how, do you truly believe in yourself and you're not willing to bet on yourself? Well, some people's focus isn't business. Some people are better, you know, they got the, they know and understand what their lane is. Jada's people, lane is just dope rhymes. He's a, he's a lyricist. Dope rhymes. You know, um, that's a good point. Uh, Ghost and 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 uh, um, what's it called that? You know, what I'm saying they are businessmen. He owns a juice bar, like you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they own a the juice he, bar. He, he understands a little bit more about being business minded. Well, I think so, Jada owns part of the juice bar too, don't he? I, I'm I think not he's, sure. I think, I think, got, sure. I think but, they both you know, own the juice bar. But you know, some people are more more geared toward one thing or the other. And you know, when when you understand that, then you go, Oh, okay, well, it's just like people have to know their lane, know what's for them and what's not for them. So, you know. What's your take on like the mainstream sound of nowadays? Um I, think, I know it's not a lot of nineties cats cup of tea. <sighs> And that and that that goes back to what I to just, me it's like that almost, goes back to what I just said. Sometimes to me it's like it's back in the eighties. What's not for you? I feel like we're right back. We're back in the eighties, where the production is just so basic and so simple. Yeah, some of that is, is very true. And things true. come around like wax has come back. You know, um, I got right over here. I was showing Bob Shirt. I got like a few cassettes in there. They're literally. I mean, I got a small hand, as you can see. They're no bigger than my hand. They're so damn small. I didn't even realize they were that small. Mm. So I opened it up. I'm like, damn, I don't remember them being this small. They're just so damn tiny, you mm-hmm. know? And they was like, these are probably collector's items. I was like, yeah, because most people don't have I got some organized confusions yeah. in there, you know, boogie monsters. It's an oddball collection. It's a very, even like uh, Mr. Long, the uh, thought I had a fart joint but i shit it <laughs> which was like a b-side <laughs> and that's the thing there was more comedy in hip-hop too back then yeah um but she has you got some cats you know more versatility um yeah i i think the sound you know like i said some of it is just knowing what's for you and knowing what's not for you um some of it is i do agree with a lot of that that is kind of like 80s like, you know, things go in cycles. Yeah. So things come back around, you know, different sounds, different beats, different things. And, um, you know, again, it's, it's the commercial level and it's the, the, the independent level. You got cats like, uh, you know, Young Dirk and all those other cats. And, you know, and then you got Griselda. Yeah. And then you got um, Coast Contra. Uh, yeah, which you know I, um, Raj Kaz's kids. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, we were talking about them when Bomb Shelter was here. Yeah, it's 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 something for everybody out there, but of course, you know, terrestrial radio is 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 the way it is. So you don't necessarily get all the the um, diversity of so, of going out there if you search for yourself, and that's more what it is now. You got to search for yourself. So you would probably agree there's fan base out there for everybody, right? It's one hundred percent a fan base out there. For I mean, everybody. I mean, statistically, it doesn't matter. There's eight like, billion much, people on the planet. Yeah, they're pretty much. I mean, even like the most basic cat on that right now we could listen to, he could probably gather some fans somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I mean, anybody can gather a fan base and get get things like like I said, there's eight billion people on the planet. But everything you could think about, anything you could think about, is either going on right now, happening right now, or getting ready to happen. So, so, you know, it's it's something for everybody out there. You said you want to see um, Fayetteville turn into like a, um, a Houston. Yeah, the scene, definitely the music scene, because I think, you know, 
if you can get people to kind of network together, you can have that kind of thing happen. I mean, do you really think that's possible? I think it's 100% possible. I think it's only going to, it's it's to the will of the people, to the will of the folks too. I mean, because really I think together. there's things lacking besides just unity. Like words like ambition, determination, um, you know, like this, the thing I realized is when you're trying to make it, it's got to be a daily job even when you're not getting paid for it. You can't just say, like, I'm not getting paid today, so I'm not going to do it. We have this motto in my circle. It's called Don't Watch Us Work. It's like you work an artist on radio. You know, if you get an artist radio play in Charlotte, a Fayetteville artist radio play in Charlotte, and if they're still in Fayetteville, why they're getting radio play in Charlotte, then they're watching us work. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's a problem is a lot of artists, they'll, I see it all the time. They'll pay people for music promo or, or marketing and advertising, and they just sit back and do this. They just watch. They don't realize that if I'm working on YouTube and people are commenting, it's your job to comment. Like, how much it is, like, because there's no college course on how to do this shit. Mm -mm. There probably never will be. You'll probably never be able to go to Harvard and take, you know, hip hop marketing 101 or how to break a, a song 101 because there's no one shoe fits all that works for some people make it on TikTok, some people make it on YouTube. You've had the SoundCloud rapper days. There's African rappers and musicians killing it on Audio Mac. I can't figure out what they're doing, how they're doing it. But they figured out Audio Mac, and that's like the hub for all these African rappers. They love Audio Mac, you know. Mm -hmm. um, some people make it on Instagram. Torn is always, I think, in my mind, going to be the number one. Yeah, I think the the thing is they have to know that you've got to go out here and and you know go on go on podcasts, go on different interviews. Um, go out here and even if it's open mics, you got to go out here to the open mics. At least you to keep your, your skill season, right? Yeah. If you can't just, yeah, you got to stay on point, right? Yeah. And and if you're putting out money for something to get your name out there, why aren't you putting out money to figure out, okay, where do I need to go to get on a stage and to go out here and perform, not just in your state, but outside of your state. I've done shows in Rhode Island, uh, you know, up and down the East Coast. Uh, I'm hoping to, you know, maybe do something in, in Florida because, you know, I've networked with some people down there. You know, just networking with people opens up doors that you, you know, you didn't think of walking through. Um, you know, hoping to do something in, in, in uh, Denver or something sometime this year, possibly, too, with some other artists and, and you know, get that together. Um, but, you know, it. You've got to you got the network. I got a good question for you. Like, there's a lot of people 50-50 on this. What's your opinion on artists paying to open up for major artists like that they fit with? They fit like, with? Yeah, like you pay. Well, you don't. Yeah, you wouldn't like if you're a 90s hip hop cat, you wouldn't pay to open yeah, up for yeah, like yeah. NBA Youngboy. But like paying up. What's your opinion on somebody like you paying to open up for like a Raekwon? I think it would make sense. It would make sense. You know what I'm Thank saying? Thank you. Uh, but you're not paying for, you know, like you said, you're not paying for NBA Young Boy. You're not paying for little whoever. If you were kind of, you know, well, a lot of people frown a more lyrical uh, rapper, you're not going to do that. Yeah, a lot of people frown on because you go back to that, I should get paid for my art thing. Now, you, a lot of people don't know, for you young whippersnappers out there, Tech Nine, Tech Nine paid to get on the Insane Clown Posse tour. Which is a fanatic kind of tour. And that's the thing. If you're getting on a tour that has fanatics you and you fit, you fit yeah. it makes all the sense, right? It's an investment, and right? Your, your investment and you're doing the subsequent things after the fact. After the and fact. And before yeah. the fact yeah. to do, to, to get your name out there. 
to and make you're sure trying to tap into their fans. It's like an opportunity yeah. to tap into their, at least a portion of their fans and try to win them over and whatnot. I got another question. Bomb Shelters asked me this. This is going to be a standard hip hop question now. Shout out to Nervous Wreck. If an alien life form landed on Earth right now, when I answered this question, I didn't have an answer at first. I was dumbfounded. If there's one song that you could play to basically tell the story of hip hop, what song would that be? And before you answer, um, Nervous Rex said Juicy from Biggie, which is I thought was a good one. It was all a dream. Used to read Word Up magazine, all that good stuff. Friend of mine said Shook Ones. I didn't know what to say at first, but I thought about it. I said Tupac Old School. Mm, that's a good one. What more can I say? Would it be here today if the old school didn't pay it through? Yeah. Um, oh, uh, I'll go with I used to love her. Common? Yeah. I love it. I love it. Who, who to me, had the best diss track ever on Ice Cube. Yeah. I mentioned you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rappers turn out. Do you think rappers need to, a lot more rappers need to do things like that? I mean, we all need a like a, a second, like everybody needs a second, third, second thing, fourth, right? Second, fifth, third, fourth, fifth, sixteenth hustle. Yeah, um, <laughs> like um, we all can't just rap. Yeah, I, hey, it's it, it's a working rapper class. Yeah, that's that's what it is. There's there's you know there's levels. Hip hop's putting out some good actors, right? Yeah, Will much. Smith, Common, Ice Cube, yeah. Queen Latifah, uh, Method Man. Method uh, Man's killing. Yeah, he's killing yeah. it. Who else am I missing? Uh, Most Def, who changed his name. Um, I know that's yeah, 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 Ice T, the great Ice T. Shouts out to Ice T. 20 me and my, me and my brother got a running joke, man. Me and my brother got a running joke about the, the, the ice tea stuff. Man. What always is it? Doing, always doing the, the 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 horrible impression, you know what I'm saying? Always talking about, yeah, I'm gonna call my uh call my 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 rep, man. I'm gonna get my rep. Y'all trying to y'all trying to write me up, you know what I'm saying? Give me a five day rip. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got plans for new music? <clears throat> right now, I got um one heart beat away, you know what I'm saying, uh called you know that's the album. It's called One Heart Beat Away. It's got a uh, cast from here in North Carolina, um, Fat, uh, Eddie Ruger. Okay, I'm, I've um, heard of him before. I don't know if I've ever checked out his music before, but I've heard of definitely him. Definitely check him out. Check out check check out Fat. Check out Fat Boy. Um, I got. Uh, some other cats on there. I got MC Search on there. You got um, MC Search on there? Okay. Um, one, one Heart on the uh, song called Message to Hip Hop Part 2. Um, and some, some other surprises on there. And so, we're going to play the uh, trolling um, video for the outro. Shout out to Hunt Day. Yeah, I definitely. When I first heard that beat, I was sitting there thinking, like, this sounds like a Ford beat, an Irvin Ford. And when you said it was Rick Marvel, it just made all the sense in the world. Yeah, shout out to Rick Marvel. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get him on the. On, and he's on over the Germany. Germany. He's over in I'm Germany. Yeah, 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 he's over in Germany. The second biggest market Mexico. in hip hop. Yeah, I'm trying to get over there. Take front. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when do you plan on uh, finishing up this uh, documentary? Um, I'm hoping everything wrapped up uh, by November. The Underground Experience show will be on an artist block. Uh, in Greensboro, um, November 18th. So everybody tap in now. Um, we're looking to line up artists and get everybody locked in. I'll be doing some interviews there with some uh, indie artists. And how long is this documentary going to be? Um, probably looking at like two hours. Two hours? I think so. We're kind of doing like, you know, I kind of wanted to do it in the vein of, of the show. Talk to the artists. Um, Are you telling you know, your story on there too? I'm I'm hoping to kind of tell my story and, and and try to let people know about the history of Omega Clan, the Empire, and and you know. Okay, yeah, that was the other group, the Empire. Yeah, yeah. So you know, just let let people know the history of of 
you know, NC hip hop in general. And What's in NCC general, record stand for? It's North Carolina Commission Hip. Commission. Yeah. Okay. And all y'all from the Ville? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so two hour documentary. It's definitely a good time for the documentary game right now. Yeah, it's definitely a good time because you know there's so many different outlets to get your story out here, and I I, I really got inspired by like the cast I told you about, Tef Kaluminati, who did um, Savage Genesis, which I was in. Go check that out on uh, Amazon Prime and Tubi. Check um, it out. And and uh, Kyan the Lion King, who you know did the Herb Train. You know that's also on uh, Amazon Prime. Um, you know. Just to see somebody do it from North Carolina, see them two cats do it from North Carolina. I'm like, well, what's the reason for me not to be able to do something from here? You know, not to be able to try and 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 you know record a story. Well, what's the most central story that I'm a part of? What's the biggest piece and the biggest passion that I have? And it's hip hop and it's hip hop music in in North Carolina mm -hmm. and the history of you know some of the people that I've networked with before. And the fact that I'm celebrating 10 years of a blog where I've interviewed artists from North Carolina to Prague. And what's the name of the blog? The blog's called The Underground Experience. Underground Experience. Um, what's your take on Moray, man? I think he's a dope cat. He's doing his thing. Um, you know, I guess there's a lot of controversy around. He wanted to kind of reach out to other artists. And some people are saying, you know, it wasn't necessarily him. It was yeah, the, I've heard some the things about whatever. the label um, didn't want him to do some features and things of that nature yeah. during COVID, which didn't really make sense to me because they couldn't do shows. And they literally broke him during COVID, you know, and we definitely need him to succeed, right? Yeah, I mean, we need, we need everybody who can from the city to be able to succeed because it puts more light on the city. It puts more, you know, um, people who are interested in, in trying to find out the talent, not just the talent in hip hop, but the talent that is going on. Talent, yeah. talent like yourself in the podcasting game, talent like, you know, other other actors and, uh, you know, other people who are doing different things, you know, artists around the city, period. Yeah, my boy sent me um, a video of this guy. I forgot his name. He's got a, um, a pod, I think he's the number one podcaster in favor. He's got like a 6.30 morning Show you familiar with him? Yeah, yep. Yeah, I just did an interview um, on his show. What's his name? Uh, Jesse Mitchell. Shout Jesse out, Mitchell. Shout out to, uh, yeah, shout Jesse out Mitchell. that dude. Shout out to Jesse Mitchell. Um, I like his setup, and I was like, 6.30, this cat is, you talking about getting it in super early. I instantly had respect for this cat, and I didn't even see nothing he's done yet. I was like, yeah, whoa, 6.30 uh, in the I've morning. I've joint a couple times. So we need more of those cats, right? Yeah. Because you remember the Larry Pickett show? Used yeah. To be in Raleigh? I, I was that, on there twice. I, I, and I, I reached out to him recently. There. Yeah, I was supposed to be on there, um, like the last show before the last show he did, and it didn't work out. They cut it off. Now let me ask you this. Okay, why are we talking? Like, all right, so maybe we need something like we need a few heads to come together and invest into a show. Because think about it, you could buy slot time on non peak hours. Yeah, and you could get a whole good thirty-minute segment, hour segment. You know, cheap. You know what I'm saying? Because maybe we need something like that. But we definitely, I think, we need some people to invest definitely into something collectively, not just say, "Hey, let's go." You know, support each other's posts, or let's go watch each other perform. Or we definitely need somebody to come through collectively and say <clears throat> we're going to invest into something whether it's an independent label do we need that do we need a independent label we've had like like what you gonna call it rolling weight and cakes was on um loud mouth i don't know if that was a fayetteville based label hmm. I, don't, I don't know if it was i don't know, I don't know we've had spot was. rushers entertainment yeah. was in north carolina which big ski um, a lot of cats don't know about Big Ski. Was out in Paradise back in the days. Had a record called "I'm the Man." Um, he ended up like being like that head marketing guy over there in Spot Rushers. And I remember they had a few groups. Um, we had the North Carolina's My Home, 
did real well on radio one time, but never really came, nothing really panned out with Rhino and um, oh, yeah, 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 and Shay and them. Crime family, right? Crime family, yeah, yeah. you know, we've had character assassins was in the unsigned hype, yeah, bomb yeah, shelters was in Independence Day, yeah. which was also the first time you heard music from the therapist, aka J. Cole, which will be coming out soon. Be on the lookout. Um, yeah, man, I mean, we. Black sheep, yeah, you might as well Mr. shout. Mr. You know what to what Fayetteville State Long, yeah. did the shout outs on the cover. Yeah, Mr. Long. Yeah. Um, we got. Which I was trying to network with Mr. Wonder. Long. Missed, uh, 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 I don't have his number. Mr. Long, yeah, I got the I the Maxi in there. Ninth Wonder, Little Brother, um, <sighs> the Baby. I mean, we even got R&B. We got Fantasia, Anthony Hamilton, and yeah. what am I missing here? What are we missing, man? I don't know. It's, it's it's things happened in segments from different places in different parts of North Carolina. Um, like you said, you know, with the baby and and, and I mean, he put Petey on Pablo, a cap from Charlotte, didn't he? Didn't and, baby put on somebody? Petey Pablo. I forgot about Petey Pablo. And, matter of fact, Entice Entice was from Winston Winston Salem. Um, uh, shout out There's to some cats that were born here from North Carolina that don't claim it, like Luther Vandross and Jermaine Dupri and, and things of that nature as well. You know, I mean, we even have always do well with like American Idols, always having big American yeah. Idol cats. Clay Aiken, what was it? Clay Aiken's won it. The Clay Aiken. Uh, I mean, else? Fantasia won American Idol. Dark didn't she? Tree. Um, it was another cat from We're Hickory. not hurt for talent. Hickory, Hickory North Carolina. Um, I don't know. We're not hurt like, for talent. Shout out just... to Yang Fu Front, too. Yang Fu Front's from Durham. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. I forgot I, about I'm them trying, back in the day. Trying, they had, like, trying, one album, right? I'm trying to get I'm trying to get up with them, um, and, and hopefully maybe we'll have something on the documentary. And, and think, that's another but, thing. Um, yeah. It ain't just Fayetteville. Like, I've seen them Durham boys come through Fayetteville and shut the show down. Josie Moe and the crew. And I was looking at everybody in favor, like, did we just really allow this to happen? <laughs> did we just allow these Durham boys? And what was crazy though, the week later, <clears throat> I saw Josie Mo on the news with some talking about it was some you know the gang violence in Durham and stuff. And I was like, that's why we allowed Durham boys to come through <laughs> the Bull City hustlers yeah. to come through and down. Tell them, and out Raleigh, I mean, Raleigh, Chapel Hill, Kazi, Chapel Hill area. Yeah, Kazi, yeah. You know, which I so had um, come down to open up for Lazy K. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, Kazi's doing his thing. He's matter of fact, he's doing acting now. Um, because I just did a thing with uh, um, oh, dude, I got him. sorry, man. I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to get up with you too. Uh, he, he's got one uh, a thing up in um, in Raleigh. Uh, uh he's a comedian. Um, as he's doing like a mixtape now too. Uh, shout out to you. We <laughs> need we need more. Sorry about the name, but um, yeah, man, I, it's it's it, like I said, everything just blew up in little cycles and little little spurts and stuff. And I'm like, I, I was talking to my brother. I said, you know, if everything would have came together at a certain time, especially like in the mid early nineties, yeah. they would have flood the zone. They would have flood the zone. We had. Uh, we had an East West um, records uh, thing back back then, uh, showcase, and certain people were on it from our our clique, our collective, and you know, there's a whole lot of stuff behind that. But you know, and even us, you know, what I'm saying we got a call from Warner Brothers at the time uh, for um, for a, a distribution, well, a development deal, excuse okay, me, okay, yeah, development, development deal. deal, and we didn't know what to do with it at the time. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying we were kids. So, you know, um, and that's another thing. A lot of people get in so young, like Lady Luck, who I did so if she was like literally 16 or 17, and your family has to step in and have power attorney and, and all that and mm -hmm. whatnot, you know. Yeah, man. Um, we definitely need more of this because you just, it's kind of crazy how this worked out. You just did the documentary segment with Bomb Shelters at the skate zone and then now you coming through here to do the podcast we need more of these things these one hand wash the other kind of things 
and really take advantage of the timing of things too. Yeah, definitely. You know, and that's why I was like, when I found out you did the documentary, say, oh, like, well, this this works out good because you just did the joint with them because we could actually even talk more. You know, it's more bomb shelters talk too. It benefits them as well. You know what I'm saying? And not just me and you. Um, is there anything you want to like just get out there that you want people to know? Well, right now like, we're having a, um, a fundraising uh, event uh, for the documentary. It's on the website, www.empiremusic.com. Go to the blog. We have the rate sheet. You can get your IMDB um, you know, credits as a, a producer, as a sponsor. You know what I mean? Go ahead, tap in. It's the so it, she's your fundraising there. is linked in with IMDB? Or, or what you'll have is a credit once you start, um, you know, once you put your put your fundraising um, level in. And what's the credits for? Uh, a producer, associate producer. Uh, you'll have a credit as a sponsor. So, you know, okay. go ahead and tap in and check it out so this is like so people can like get like shout outs on the documentary and get their name included and stuff like that on the credits and whatnot yeah okay okay and um what's that start out as like like the pricings on that um we got uh they charge you know, like a dollar per credit or something <clears throat> like that or no what i'm doing what i'm doing is, is is funding the movie okay um you know funding the movie funding the the actual um funding the actual making of the movie and basically what we got here is the credits start out um well of course if you're outside the people i'm, I'm basically networking with to uh sit down the, there's a booking fee if you want to be a part of it actually sit down uh it's 45 performance on the film uh that's for like the so the booking fee is for people that you're not really you haven't reached out to, but they might want to be into it. So you're allowing people to actually pay on there and tell their story as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, performance for the for the concert as fifty uh, special thanks. Oh, so credit. you're gonna have a concert um, based around it too. Yes. So is that gonna be like your whole release party thing kind of deal? The concert. Uh, the concert is basically gonna be the closeout for the whole film. Okay. I'll be recording the concert that will be part of it, kind of like, you know, rhyme and reason, kind of like now the, the show. People in the documentary um, going to be the ones performing? Yeah, some of the people that are Okay, that are some of the people in the documentary. documentary. Okay. Um, like I said, special thanks credit, uh, that's 49. Uh, the associate producer credit, that's 100. Uh, Co-producer credit, that's 250. Uh, executive producer is 600. So, you know, um, you can tap in. Um, so basically they pay 600 they're basically um you put them on as executive producer mm -hmm. and whatnot exactly. okay so you know tap in go ahead and go to the site empire music music spell m-u-s-i-q and uh check it out and and tap in and, and, and what's become your, a part of this 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 movement what we're what's doing. your socials i'm gonna throw them in the description of mm -hmm. the videos as well but um just so course, people know IG, um, that's NCC CEO. Uh, Facebook is NCC Record the Empire. Um, with and without the space, uh, there's there's two two different ones. Um, NCC Record Empire, that's Twitter, and of course NCC Records the Empire on TikTok. Okay, so we got the documentary. You got new music. Um, Anything we missing? Um, like I said, just tap into all of it. Anything okay. else we missing, just go ahead and go to the website. Um, like I said, and and the show will be at the artist block nor um excuse me, November eighteenth, eight PM will be uh So you already got the the date for the um the performance and everything, date, November eighteenth. We're, so we're we're gonna lock in, we're locking in all the artists. And anybody else who wants to be involved, please lock in. Uh, please tap in and, and go to the website and get my contact information and hit me up. Now, you only looking for North Carolina artists, right? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's what we're doing right now is North Carolina artists. So it's not just limited to Fayetteville, so it's just North Carolina artists, period. Yeah. Um, we've, I've interviewed. And now, would uh, they have to Cash travel to, to you? To North Greensboro. Um, I, I can 
travel to to them that will be setting up you know and that's part of like the up. fees right like yeah. of why you you had a fees because just in case you got to come to them and whatnot yeah okay okay and um we'll definitely try to put something in the description for that as well in the links to that um well i hope y'all enjoyed it um you can come on you know again have some more hip-hop discussions i mean because you really can't yeah. tell the whole story of hip hop in just just an hour, like an hour. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's just so much we missed. There's so much we can include. Um, once again, I'll thank y'all for tuning in, Mr. J, Paul Pickett, Paul Pickett Podcast, and we out. I'm prepared, this life will give you an eyeful Too many trolling for nothing Underwear cats out here is head hunting yeah. Wolves with the heat, that heat will leave you slump Over in your front seat Now you got your ticket punched When you should have been about the beats World out of reach Pastor giving you his last speech All cause you beefing for a hit Treating the game like it's like a lick, lick. Talk slick, slick, then get your wig split You get one warning to stay off the strip Next time, them bow and arrows will leave you zip Treating the game like it's like a lick, lick. Talk slick, slick, then get your wig split You get one warning to stay off the strip I got so much to deal with You got no choice but feel this Our fans got hands up, yours still sit Take them on a field trip, going to the top tip I got so much to deal with You got no choice but feel this Our fans got hands up, yours still sit Take them on a field trip, going to the top tip Going to the top and I can't look down I see a bunch of hate but it's just those clowns They hate what I make, I stay by the cake Gotta make it shake, when you broke you break Never worry about what I can't control Focused on my goals and every day I'm praying for my soul I got glow, I got flow You know what you know, if you don't you slow These streets got no love, played by no code Boys on the corner and they all getting blow It's unfair out there, no one cares nor shares Better off being prepared, no signs of being scared I dressed up in army fatigue gear Circle so small, no room for a square Keep trolling, they might put you in a chair For focus, I'm riding till I need a spare, yeah I got so much to deal with You got no choice but feel this Our fans got hands up, yours still sit Take them on a field trip, going to the top tip I got so much to deal with You got no choice but feel this Our fans got hands up, yours still sit Take them on a field trip, going to the top tip